I usually just make my blacks or my dark darks out of mixing a dark purple and a red and a magenta. It'll be fine for just tweaking tones. Colors ain't tweaking, the paintings aren't geeking. Poisonous cat on my fingers, because that's how we paint. We're gonna be using transfer paper. I'm gonna show you guys how to use transfer paper, and we're gonna do this little rat fink image, which I do not own the copyright for, but from what I understand, the people that control the copyright are pretty cool. So yeah, I'm working on this hot rod painting. It's got a lot of like gas culture stuff, a lot of hot rod culture stuff. And I've got a larger rat fink here. And sometimes I just like to duplicate things. So we're gonna duplicate another rat fink. This one, the larger one I didn't stencil, I just painted it by eye. Uh, but since I wanted to stencil something, I used transfer paper. Um, decided this will be good and I'm not gonna do the tail. I'm gonna paint the tail in a way that it looks cool. So we're not just copying things. I think this dude's still missing a tail. So I gotta put a tail on him. So you basically cut the piece that you want. You can use this stuff like a zillion times. Um, I used to do, I used to use it for a lot of paintings. I really don't use it very often anymore because most of the stuff I do, I mostly just block it in. So I'm gonna tape it down so it doesn't move too much. If I paint like a hot rod, I think I stenciled this dinosaur. I keep saying stencil because that's what we say in tattooing, but it's actually kind of a different process, even though it's exactly the same. All right, for all you folks out there that make tattoos, this part's gonna look pretty familiar to you. Yeah, so it's just like uh, tattooing for the most part. You just kind of trace it. You can get super exact shapes with this thing if you're really going crazy with it. I mean, this is a hot rod rat feet character, so I'm just basically showing you how to use it for the demo. I'm basically just gonna silhouette this whole thing. So I'm gonna do is just pull this thing back and you can see there's like an outlined image right there. So I'm gonna grab this super hairy beat up brush. I obviously love because I've been using it for way, way too long. So the Rat Fink dude is green. So I'm just gonna make like a dark, dark purple as the underpainting. And then we'll put the green and the red on top of it. But the point is, is that we just get something down that's dark. I like to build stuff from dark to light because that's how light falls on things. That's how I like to paint. Yeah, once again, I like these Wizard Newtons. I like to use pretty much all of them. University series, they're just rad. They're rad brushes. You can use them for basically anything. If I had to use one brush for the rest of my life, it would definitely be these Wizard Newton brushes. Yeah, I do kind of a weird thing where when I paint, I kind of block things in and then I start rendering it and then I'll move on to a different area without finishing an area. I like my paintings to be just a little bit sloppy and out of control. And then you have some sections that are just super duper rendered. That gives like a really nice look. And a lot of my favorite painters work that way. So it's not a surprise that that's how I like to work. Hit it again with the blow dryer. All right, so I did the silhouettes. So now I'm gonna bring that back over. Now I'm gonna do the details. Some people like to just completely render everything as they go. I find that sometimes looser sections in your painting will make the rendering stuff look more dynamic if you do it right. So sometimes I feel like people overwork themselves just to make something that's overworked and then the painting feels like really stiff. A lot of plain air stuff like those John Singer Sargent paintings. Like yeah, they're super tight from a distance but once you get up close you can see that there's a lot of fabric and there's a lot of chunks in the background that are basically just areas of paint that represent what it's supposed to look like. And since he nails the tone so well, they just read right. You get the point. All right, so we'll start with the, the red body. Since this is kind of like more in the distance, I'm gonna knock it down. It's gonna be like a little bit more red and a little bit more gray. Definitely more towards the pink range in its darkest spots. So yeah, I'm just gonna start blocking this in. Probably gonna take a couple layers just to make it look nice. It's like one of these lines disappeared. I thought I hit it twice, but I didn't. It's a nice thing about painting though. When you tattoo, if you make a mistake like that, it's not as easy to repair on a painting, it doesn't really matter. 
Yeah, a lot of times I see painters working on something, I go, oh, that's cool. Just keep trying over and over and over again. And I look at tattooers and I think, holy smokes, those dudes take some pretty crazy risks. That's first layer of red, pink. That's like a good reason to paint if you're a tattooer. Decisions on the fly, let's see how different things work with each other. That way you're not experimenting on somebody's arm, which I know tattooers are out there doing. See it. I've got the wet palette, keeping my paints nice and wet. This rat fink I'm painting right now, in theory, is gonna recede. This one up front is gonna come more to the forefront, and this one's gonna kind of recede more into the clouds. So when you use softer lights or softer colors, that uh, adds to the effect. But I'm still gonna pretend that there's light kind of coming in from the top. So when I come back to the palette, I just add a little bit more water just because it's been drying as I paint. And I just keep stacking the layers on top of each other. Got that yellow, and now we're gonna do the green. Use a bunch of diarrhea green. So yeah, as you can see, my darkest dark tone on this one was super dark. And of course, we're stacking it on top of a, you know, this purple. Even bring it up even a bit more. I'm gonna make it really a lot lighter. You'll see this part that doesn't have the underpainting. It'll have like a, a weakness to it.
Getting getting closer though. We're definitely uh, getting to the fun part. So I stepped down to a smaller triple ot. I I would prefer to use a single ot, but I don't think I have one that's not beat to hell. Here's one. Let's see if this one's any good. I'm still using my reference. I usually don't use reference this much on something like this, but I'm gonna keep it kind of close to the original. The structure is about the same. And it's same same technique I pretty much always use unless I'm uh, doing uh, glazes or kind of darker glazes over sections. I, I pretty much always build light on top of dark. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of adding lighter layers over and over again. Sometimes I'll throw in different tones and stuff to kind of mess with things. So, you know, that can help like build other shapes. Kind of like I was saying earlier, this is kind of like the the place where I start to make more decisions on like, okay, is this gonna be more rendered? Or are we gonna keep this loose? Cause I, I really don't make those types of decisions right at first. Like I'll pretty much start stepping back away from the painting and see how it's looking. See if I need to like really go crazy on it. Cause really, yeah. Like if you, if you go crazy on the whole freaking painting and just render it to death like a photograph, I mean, it does a thing and it can look real cool sometimes, but a lot of times it just kills the painting. It just takes the spirit out of it. Uh, Ed Roth was a artist, an airbrush artist and a painter and a toy manufacturer eventually and a hot rod builder. And he also did just all sorts of custom stuff, custom pinstripes, a lot of custom builds for hot rods and a lot of just cool stuff. He was just into like cool stuff. Yeah, the Ed Roth Museum's in Manti and they have, they usually have an event once a year where people get together and they show art and sell it. You can become like an official, like licensed, like Ed Roth artist if you contact his, uh, his wife. Yep, so I'm still building. Definitely uh, at this point, I always start leaning into it more. I start watering my paints down more near the end. I'll start using thinner and thinner paints. Dun, dun. That's it. And that's how you do it. Beep, 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 beep. I don't know if we'll have like a photo of like the whole painting to show you, but I know for a fact there's a couple other things I need to tighten up. But really at this point, um, this painting's mostly done. I'm just kind of going through and picking out things and uh, putting in more highlights and knocking things down, adding more textures and that's uh, how this painting is going to go. And hopefully at some point, uh, well, at some point you will be able to see this on my website and 
uh, hopefully a, a gallery soon so I can get rid of it. That's it.